Okay, uh, don't be too optimistic, even when the presentation is in Portuguese. I will not speak Portuguese. Uh, this presentation has been prepared, the first part of the presentation has been prepared by our representative in Sao Paulo. She was in San Carlos also yesterday, but she had to move to Sao Paulo again today since there is a, be, a, there is a highly ranked visitor today. I do not know how, who, but she had to go back. She had to go back. So I take her presentation and tell you as an introduction something about Freie Universität, something about Berlin, and why we think it's a good idea to come into collaboration, come into contact for some research time, maybe as a PhD student, as an undergraduate, or as a postdoc researcher. Sensia Sem Fronteras covers all these schemes. So Berlin is the capital of Germany. This should be known even in Brazil. But the Germans not always know that Brasilia is the cap uh, capital of Brazil. And <clears throat> uh, Brazil is a nice city to live. We have four universities in Berlin. It's also a good place to research. We have four universities, we have a number of high schools, a, high, a number of polytechnics, and we have a huge number of research institutes which do not belong to the universities, but in Germany we have a parallel system of research funding by the Fraunhofer Society, by the Max Planck Society, by the, Hel by the Helmholtz Society. They all drive or, uh, own research institutes, and many of them are concentrated in uh, Berlin. The three universities are the important one, Freie University. The less important ones are the Technical University and the Humboldt University. And we have one uh, medical faculty that is driven together by Humboldt and Freie Universität. It is called Charité. It does not belong to one of the universities. This is more or less independent. And I mentioned uh, the research institutes of the Max Planck Society. Many of them are centered in the southwest of Berlin. The southwest is the place where Freie Universität is located. So, strictly spoken, our campus is surrounded by uh, research institutes. And this has the reason in a time that is 100 years ago where this district of Dahlem in the south of, Ch of Berlin has been designed artificially by the old Germans. This time we had an imperial, Kaiser Wilhelm, uh, to be an equival equivalent to Oxford and Cambridge, a huge research area. And this is the research area of Dahlem, which exists even today. The campus Dahlem is huge and hosts a lot of uh, researchers. Almost 10,000 uh, researchers are concentrated in the southwestern part, and a number of Nobel Prize winners result from this area. Of course, when you hear the names, uh, Albert Einstein, Max Planck, and Otto Hahn, this is long time ago, and it is not a quality criterion for us. But I should mention Gerhard Ertel, he's a chemist. He's a chemist and won the Nobel Prize, I think, five or six years ago. So also in modern times, Berlin Dahlem is a renowned and well-established research area. So why not going there and study? Or uh, bring some time with, with you to Berlin and research there? Why not? Freie University is in German scale a big university. In Brazilian scale, nothing. We have approximately 30,000 students this is the size of Santa Maria. I think San Paulo at USP had 120,000 students. I do not, Ufska, do you know? No. But pr probably you have the same size. Yes. But for the German scale, this is big. 
We have approximately 500 professors. With this number, you should know the, the system to become a professor is a little different between Germany and Brazil. That's why you cannot compare the numbers one to one. We have 15 departments. We have a number of graduation courses. And we have a number of graduation courses, also master courses, running in English. So if you decide to go for one year with Census and Fronteras, for example, to Berlin, we will find a selection of English courses which are suitable for you, at least in chemistry. And here are only chemists. So uh, I can concentrate this discussion to chemists. At other universities, we introduced uh, our university more in general. But here I can make a concentration to chemistry and also say that the chemistry department in our university is unified in the big faculty together with the biology and the pharmacy. This is not so bad, since this makes uh, a lot of collaborations possible, since we all belong to the same administrative unit, and so some synergy can be won uh, by the combination of these three important natural science. And even the physics department is just one street away from our department. That's why we can also collaborate with the physics very easily. For students, sometimes research is not the only argument. So I should mention that Berlin is, or the area of Dahlem particularly, is a very green area with a lot of grass around, a lot of trees around. But to be honest, this is not the normal student's life. This might be the, the lunch break or something. Normally, also students in Berlin are inside the lab and not outside on the grass. <clears throat> well, I have to say this. I don't like to make this type of propaganda. Of course, uh, Freie Universität ranks within the German universities to the top universities and even worldwide we should to be found within the top 100. Sometimes this changes. So I do not over-evaluate this type of ranking, since then you must know the criteria, what is a good university. And not only these extra good universities produce good students or makes it comfortable to work there. We have founded some research areas that go parallel to the departments. Before, I showed you the department structure. And now I have concentrated to five different, we call that focus areas. And the prerequisite for such a focus area, it, they must have researchers from different departments. Synergy is a plan, here is an administrative plan, and you do not receive when you just want to make your research alone. Some like this, some not, but this is an innovative uh, plan to push research, to push collaboration between the departments of our university. From the foreign policy, we can say we are international. I introduced to my research group, and the results I spoke about today have been produced by many nationalities. And so this process to attract students from other countries is supported by our university administration uh, in the way that we have international offices. We have one here very close to San Carlos in San Paulo, but we have one more in Beijing, in in China, we have one in Delhi, in India, in Moscow, in Russia, in Cairo, and in Brussels, and in New York. This costs a lot of money, but the plan is to make an international network university to collaborate with a maximum of partners, with a maximum of interested partners worldwide. And so we are very happy that the Brazilian government finally supports our intention by their own intention, uh, by the project Ciencias and Fronteras. 
there might be problems in the organization, but we will learn with the system. And I will show you some minutes later how we organized it in chemistry to welcome Brazilian students and to keep them working and learning at our uh, institute. In principle, there are different opportunities with Ciencias Sem Fronteras. You can go to a full doctorate, a full doctorate to Germany with the supervisor exclusively in Germany. There is another opportunity for the doctoral uh, collaboration in a kind of a sandwich model. This is, in my opinion, a favorite model. That means you go half of the time to Berlin, half of the time you stay in Brazil. That means you keep the connection to the Brazilian university and receive the degree of the Brazilian university. We are presently working in so-called double degree systems. In principle, it is possible to, to present to the PhD students the doctoral degree of both universities, the German and the Brazilian. But this is, uh, has to be organized by the central administration. And this is sometimes more complicated than to operate within a chemistry laboratory. There are some open positions for both for postdocs. And they are also possible to go in the graduation sandwich program. This is a little more complicated. I will, co will comment it uh, later. What, is, what are the costs when you go to Berlin? To be honest, I did not calculate these numbers. I just represent them. But they are more or less realistic. To live in Berlin is expensive, but not that expensive when you compare it with other cities like London or Paris or even German cities like Munich. Compared with these cities, Berlin is relatively costly. Uh, relatively cheap, but what means relative? These are more than $500. You need, of course, something uh, for the health, uh, health care. You need something to eat. Laser you can cut. This doesn't play, this doesn't play a role. You're a chemist. You're on the lab. This is your uh, leisure. And leave your copiers. Okay, so we come to a sum between 650, 850 euros a month. When you go to the Census for, uh, San Fronteras scholarships, then you see there's a lot extra. They pay much more. But don't, t don't tell them that the, li that the li living, living expenses in Berlin are cheap. You can use the money to travel around. Uh, Berlin has just a small airport, but it has direct connections with many European metropoles. So to come from Berlin to Paris, to Rome, to uh, Athens, to uh, Madrid, or to London is easy and not expensive. The live, living costs there are expensive. But this is also a plan when you go abroad. Do not just go to the lab. Go to the world around take the opportunity to meet Europe. And finally, I should give you the address of Christina Peters. This is the lady who is in our office in Sao Paulo. And you find that in the internet, simply type in FU Berlin, Sao Paulo, then the first hit is her address. So you don't need to write this from this transparency. I mentioned at some point <clears throat> uh, situations in the previous slides that I will go a little more in detail later. And now is later. Uh, we come to the Chemistry Institute, and there I am an expert. That, since I can speak about our institute, since I have established most of the structures, and I have also established the opportunities for Sensors and Fronteras. So the Chemistry at Freie Universität is rather big. We have three big buildings. This is the building of the inorganic chemistry. Here, a much bigger building, as, you, uh, as it looks like here, is the organic and the physical chemistry. And this is the so-called Hahn Meitner building, where Otto Hahn, 75 years ago, invented 
the nuclear fission. This was done in this building, in, not in this tower, but behind this tower. And now this building hosts our biochemistry. It belongs to our institute. Strictly spoken, the chemistry at the Freie Universität is organized <clears throat> like any other chemistry department in the world as well. We are one unique institute. We have one head. But we have sub, some subunits which are divided by the work that we do. Inorganic chemistry, organic chemistry, physical and theoretical chemistry, and biochemistry. The chemical education is nowadays relatively similar to the situation in Brazil. When you study chemistry in Germany, you also have that what you call undergraduate course. We, we call it Bachelor in Chemistry. It comprises six semester, and the language in these courses are German. This should be mentioned, since this is a part of the problem that I meant when I said with the undergraduate uh, education, there are some problems with the exchange. Since you need a good knowledge of the German language if you want to follow these classes. This is no problem anymore in the Master of Chemistry. After the six, first six semesters, our students get a degree, the bachelor degree, and then they make the Master in Chemistry for the next four semesters. And here the language is a mixture between German and English. Some of the courses are held in German, some of in English. The exams are bilingual, so you can request the questions of the exam in English, and you can answer in English. So this is a more or less open system. And within this system, it is no problem to find interesting classes for foreigners who do not speak sufficiently German. A sufficient knowledge of English is by far enough to follow these classes. And you will see later that the master course also offers the opportunity to make, a, in a large scale, research labs. Parallel to the Master of Chemistry, we have an additional master. We call it Polymer Science. This is run together with other Berlin universities, with the Technical University, with the University of Potsdam, and the Humboldt University. And the language is exclusively English in this course. The biochemistry studies are similar to the chemistry studies, six semester bachelor in German, four semesters master, a mixture of German and English. And finally, which might be interesting, is the PhD in chemistry. This is held in German or English. There is no restriction at all. Uh, so you can be accepted without a language certificate. The only request is, you speak a language at a level that we understand you and you understand us. Since this is in the chemistry lab, also a question of safety. So Portuguese alone is a little less. This is the normal chemistry a CV, you study 10 semesters in the bachelor masters, then you go three, maximum four years to the PhD and then you have finished. But let's go back to the content. Let's go back to the content of our bachelor course. It lasts six semesters. And of course, all the content, which is also taught here in San Carlos, is taught in Berlin. General chemistry, inorganic chemistry, some physics, some mathematics. We have uh, theoretical chemistry. We have spectroscopy, the same as here. A difference might be that we have organized in all semesters, here highlighted in blue, a big number of teaching labs. This is different than in Brazil. We have lab courses exclusively for German, uh, for students, and any student makes the same lab course. This finally makes an a leveled uh, 
quality of the bachelor that we educate. And you see, each of the semesters is full of blue color, is full of lab work. So in the daily life, this means in the morning, Thank you.